Hey there guys, today's video is going to be a long overdue update on my sunken greenhouse project, also known as a wallapini by some folks. Essentially it's just a greenhouse that has been sunken into the ground or built into a hillside to try and take advantage of the thermal benefits of the mass of the earth that it is built within. And uh, if you followed this project for any amount of time, you'll know that it is uh, slightly over-engineered and uh, way underutilized, but it has been a fun project and I think is a very strong concept, uh, especially for folks in more northern climates. And you can tell my roosters have also been waiting for this update. So anyway, I'm going to take you inside, show you what I've got growing in there. I'll show you a couple of updates on a retaining wall I built, as well as some some new ventilation windows that fold out with some little pulley systems and hopefully you'll find it interesting all right well now that we're in the greenhouse and out of the wind i think the first thing i'll do is start this out with a quick tour of what i've got growing in this built-in bed and then i will get on to uh, the ventilation upgrades and the retaining wall and uh, a couple other things that i may not be thinking about right now but first i want to make one quick note for those of you who have seen this project in the past, you might be wondering, I uh, used to have totes here and buckets here that had many more plants growing in there um, and why I don't have them. Well, that is simply just because when I was working on the retaining wall and the ventilation stuff, time got the best of me and I was only able to get this amount planted out. Uh, but hopefully you will find something in this video uh, entertaining or maybe helpful in case you want to do a similar style project. All right, so now we'll get on to this little tour. Well, to start this tour off, I got to give a little bit of a disclaimer, and that is that you are going to notice quite a smorgasbord of randomness in regard to what we planted and where we planted, as all of these things aren't necessarily what you would normally plant in a space such as this. But we were time short, and we just decided to throw it in and see how it did. And as you can see, they do rather well in this greenhouse, even if we did plant them rather late. Uh, everything in this section of the bed right here was started from seed and starting over here from the left we have some bush beans, some onions, lettuce, I think this is a marigold, uh, got some little lavender starts back there, carrots and celery up here. Uh, also note a lot of this will be transplanted in the garden in about a month and a half. Um, some more beans over here and then we've got some peppers uh, we did have a row of peppers in here i don't know what happened but uh, those are bell peppers california wonders and some chilies we got some uh, cherry tomatoes back there some dill coriander some other cherry tomatoes uh, some cucumelons and then we start into some of our tomatoes again these were bought as pots the little uh, I don't know three or four dollar pots that were there maybe about five inches tall but you can see they are just thriving in here and these will not be transplanted if I do I'd, I would attempt to do it in a bucket but they're pretty much ready to stay in here and you can see there's little tomatoes on them already and that is the extent i wish it was more but uh oh yeah we've got some armenian cucumbers back there uh, let's see if i missed anything some rosemary right in there and uh that is going to conclude this little uh, impromptu uh a very short garden tour and now i will talk about uh the upgrades We'll get on to the upgrades or updates uh, and the first being uh, the retaining wall you can see i did a mortared stone wall it goes down about 16 inches uh, from the bed level and uh, you may not think that's enough for a retaining wall but if you remember when i was building this greenhouse that is pure rock down there i had to use a jackhammer to get the anchors for these retaining walls in uh, so i think it'll be totally good and what i did is i just mortared the rocks up tried to keep a flat face i'll show some clips of this up close and i mortared them up about six to seven inches and let the mortar dry and essentially i had a little trough and i poured concrete and then backfilled it with old scrap pieces of broken concrete stones uh chicken wire other bits and pieces of scrap metal to give it some reinforcement 
And I did that about 50 bags of concrete worth, maybe 55, and brought it up to this level. And then I uh, drilled some concrete anchors into the footer of the original wall that these walls end up anchoring to where those uh, cinder blocks are and uh, that way it could be tied into that and so it's it's if it comes uh, crashing in this whole thing's going to come crashing in and then on the top i poured about a two inch layer of concrete on the edge it's only about an inch and a quarter and i just formed it up with some uh, two by fours some old scrap metal uh, so that i could have kind of that concrete countertop uh, breakaway uh, basically uh, had screws mounted in uh, underneath and then I just cut them off with a little uh, oscillating tool uh, and use those as my forms and then I just finished all the top of this by hand with a trowel so it's not perfect but uh, for this greenhouse I think it looks good and contrasting to the previous little shelves that I had to with the tubs that I had on them uh, no rats or snakes can get underneath there so I think it provides a nicer aesthetic um, as well as providing a surface that I could put starts on um, and just overall has a nicer look. So now we'll get on to the ventilation. And the next upgrade I wanted to add was some additional ventilation uh, for the times that my solar ventilation fan and these thermally regulated hinge vents uh, don't quite keep up. Uh, these uh, hinged vents uh, kick on about 83 degrees, they start to open and then the uh, solar ventilation fan kicks on between 83 and 85 degrees. Uh, but I wanted to be able to have windows that I could open up fully to allow pass-through ventilation, especially for those like transition times like late spring where it's starting to get pretty warm and I really need a good amount of airflow. So what I did is I welded two uh, window frames on the low side of the front of the greenhouse and I'll show you a clip of that now. And uh, it's controlled with this just a PVC pipe into some standard brackets and what it does is I have uh, some steel cable that is uh, wound up around there and I simply turn it and it will open those windows by way of a hinge. And then on the end of the greenhouse um, I think one of the previous videos I just had one ventilation window well now I have two and they both both open by way of some little uh, counterweighted uh, pulley systems so these two little things that uh, hook up here these handles let them go and uh, you might be able to hear that on the camera um, but basically there's wind coming through right now and with this one there's quite a bit of airflow uh, coming through right now. So I'll show you each, each of these with some clips uh, of them opening and closing so you can kind of see the mechanisms and how the wire or the, the steel cable runs through. And that's pretty much it. And then I'll let you guys go. Well, I think that is going to do it for this edition of the Sunken Greenhouse Project. As always, I hope you found it interesting and perhaps something I did in this video or one of the many videos where I uh, built this from the original hole in the ground to what it is now may provide uh, some useful information in case you wanted to build something like this for yourself. Uh, or the inverse of that, maybe you've seen something that I've done in this that you definitely don't want to do and you can just make sure not to do that. 
uh, because I readily admit probably the biggest weakness of this is the interior growing space. That's why I sometimes refer to it as over-engineered and uh, I really worked on all of the construction portion, but I didn't account for enough interior growing space. But other than that, I think it's a very uh, sound concept, uh, especially if you live in a more northern climate. I'm kind of right in that borderline where we do get cold during the winter, but I mean, this is really useful maybe two and a half months out of the year. Uh, whereas if you were up in say Michigan or Montana or something like that, man, you might get seven, eight, nine, ten months of use out of it. Uh, because in the hottest couple of months of the year, uh, this thing's just, it's a broiler. So anyway, um, with all that said, uh, hopefully it was interesting. Uh, and, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and, uh, uh, make sure you, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going. Uh, you can tell I don't script these, but uh, I think the next video is probably going to be back to the truck camper. I'm literally just waiting for paint to dry uh, so I can start putting the siding on and the windows and all that. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you on the next one. God bless.